Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at EMP weapons, uh, both kind of what they do, uh, how to avoid them, and kind of how to use them. Fortunately for us, there's not a lot of EMP-like devices, so it shouldn't be too, too bad as far as uh, what we're going to be looking at today. Let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, uh, what I've done is I've set up a pretty simple scenario where I'm in the middle of the desert here, relatively high altitude. I set up this little set of different SAM sites to kind of demonstrate the different effects of EMP. One type of SAM site is a simple SA-2. This is going to be the B model. The radars are turned off. We also have a modern set, such as an S-300 PT-1. This is an SA-10A with its radar turned on. We have the same system with its radar turned off. And of course, we have the legacy system, the SA-2B, with its radar turned on as well. They are marked at half mile, one mile, two mile, and three nautical miles, so that you can see the combined impact of using these different weapons at different distances. Now you're probably wondering why I'm using both legacy systems as well as modern systems, and why I have some of them with the radars turned on and some of them with the radars turned off. As you're gonna see in a minute, that has a massive impact on how effective an EMP weapon is. So let's go ahead and try it out. So what I have here is I have myself a basic little bunker, and uh, what I attached is one of the different EMP weapons we actually have built into command. Unfortunately for us, because we do not have the Fancy Pants uh, Professional Edition, we are only going to be benefiting from using what they call the omnidirectional EMP as opposed to the directional EMP. The only real difference between these two weapons is a directional EMP is basically, if you want to think about it like a tight blast of a shotgun, why an omnidirectional EMP basically spreads it out everywhere. Again, if you want to imagine it in another, another way, you could use a directional EMP to hit a particular system in a concentrated cone. You'd have to use an omnidirectional, which is going to waste a lot of energy blasting in the wrong direction, to try to get a bigger area. There are other EMP weapons that are available inside the command, is, of course, is if you go up to the database, you type in weapon, and you go ahead and type in EMP. As you can see, we don't have a lot of choice here. We have basically the AGM-158. If you want to imagine, this is the stealth cruise missile version. We also, of course, have the GBU-31s, which are the JDAM versions. I know everybody's sitting there going, oh, bummer, we don't have any anti-ship EMP weapons. I really wish there were, because if we did want to do anything with anti-ship with EMP weapons, things are going to get a little bit more difficult for us. And of course, we have nuclear weapons, but oh, we'll get to that in a minute. So let's go ahead and test a base little system here and uh, see what happens and see if there's any observations we can make. So I'm going to go ahead and launch a single one of these AGM-158Bs. Again, this is basically your JASM cruise missile. It's going to be traveling uh, very, very low off the ground. It's going to be lining ourselves up. Don't mind the U-2 plane. It's just kind of keeping an eye on things. Now, the first thing that's going to be interesting here when this weapon actually does hit the ground is the fact that they always, always, always fall short. I don't know if this is an in-game limitation or this is just something kind of that's sort of uh, realistic. I'm not actually sure here. So if you actually watch, even though I'm aiming for this point here, watch where the weapon actually chooses to detonate. Drum roll, please. Now remember, half a mile, mile, two miles, three miles, boom. So you can see that the weapon actually detonated short an entire nautical mile. You also noticed when the weapon detonated that you saw that little lightning bolt icon appear on several of these different uh, vehicles. Now the reason that happened is that tells them that they were under the effect of the electromagnetic pulse that, that weapon created. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the actual damage we did here. I noticed none of the EMP reached this far. You need a directional EMP device to try to hit that far. So first, we have our little legacy system here. He's uh, sitting here. He's got his radar on the off position. He was within a half of a mile of the actual aim point. Of course, as you saw where the weapon actually landed over here, it ended up being closer to a mile and a half. So big difference there. You can take a look, if I just pop up his damage control real fast, that the only thing that got damaged was his fire control radar. Basically, they got nipped. Not too bad here. Of course, I will go to the one mile away. No damage in the slightest, even though you can see exactly a good line of sight. Let's go ahead and take a look at the modern radar system. Oh, this is a little different. We can see that in half a mile, his flap lid A, which is his fire control radar, was annihilated. You can also see that his command data link, which he needs to talk to the missiles, was badly damaged. Now, if I go to the same thing about a mile away, you'll see that the damage is basically the same. Again, it's going to be a little random each time. But you can see in this case, even though he was a mile away, he also got significant damage to both the search radar as well as his fire control radar. Now, his buddy two miles away, of course, took no damage at all. Now, notice this modern system had its radar turned on, and it got wrecked. Going over to a radar turned off, look at the difference. You can see with his radar being in the off position that his data link got basically nipped a little bit. And coming over here, you can see that this one, who's a mile away with the radar off, took no damage compared to his buddy over here at the same distance, who took significant damage. Now, this is where it's going to get interesting. Go ahead and take a look at our SA-2 here, who had his radar turned on, who was in the line of sight of the blast. 
no damage at all. Matter of fact, if I click on his buddy over here, it was a mile away, you can see that the damage is actually very minor, actually basically the equivalent of what the damage of the radar turned off version of the SA-2 was. Of course, this one was basically immune. So that raises the first two important points. First of all, EMP war weapons work better on modern electronics. It doesn't matter if you're a missile warhead, it doesn't matter if you're an airplane, it doesn't matter if you're a radio. The more modern the electronic, the more effective it will be. The second really, really important point is if your electronics are turned on, this is especially true with radars, you're going to be suffering far more damage than if you had it actually turned off. Now, let's go ahead and demonstrate this to a little bit more of an extreme here, so you can see what an, basically an alpha strike with EMP weapons would look like, and you can even see this even more clearly. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my EMP source one more time, give my U2 a moment to go ahead and spot everybody. Thanks, U2, you've been very helpful today. Go ahead and select everybody. I'm gonna just double check to make sure I didn't accidentally grab the thing I always get. Looks good to me. Let's go ahead and allocate one weapon each. Go down here, we can grab all these, allocate one weapon each, and we'll get the two SA2s and allocate one weapon each. That should get us a total of 16 cruise missiles. This is actually very entertaining to watch because it goes blop, 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 and just kind of fires out like that. Okay, so the weapons are now arriving. Fortunately, these weapons do not have electronics on board that can be scrambled by their own electromagnetic pulse. Now, if that were the case, things would go pretty bad. Notice our weapons that hit in the center actually damaged the entire group, even though they didn't necessarily aim at the individual. Again, that's the advantage of an omnidirectional system. So be very careful when you're using these that you go ahead and take the time to try to set it up so that weapon hits a little bit up beyond where you're actually aiming. Okay, let's look at the damage. So physically, these structures look like they're in pretty darn good shape. Uh, taking a look at our leg legacy radar off, looks a little bit of damaged. This one got hit, eh, barely even got nipped. Uh, let's take a look at this SA-2. Yeah, probably was pretty bad damage. Let's take a look. Yeah, pretty bad damage to the radar. Coming over here, of course, taking a quick look. Uh, pretty bad damage to the radar again, but nothing critical. Let's take a look at the SA-2s, the classic system with the radars turned on. Destroyed. Coming down to this one, let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, badly damaged, but not destroyed. Take a look at this one. Destroyed. And then, of course, we'll take a look at this one here, who probably received multiple hits. Badly damaged. Now, to really illustrate my point, Take a look at the modern systems. So this one had his radar turned on. He lost everything. His command data link was even badly damaged. Take a look at his buddy, same distance. Remember, each one of these got their own weapon delivered. Badly damaged. Uh, cruising up to this one again, radar's turned off, wrecked. This one over here, radar turned on, destroyed. Coming up here, of course, I'll take a look at this one. Remember, each one got their own hit, basically wrecked. Take a look at this one especially, badly damaged. And again, remember, each one of these received their own weapon. So looking really quickly, you can see that the classic system actually did a better job surviving the impact of these weapons, especially when their radars were turned off, just like the point I was making a moment ago. And the other thing you noticed, like I said, was trying to land the weapon here by basically overshooting this target to try to hit it. That works best with omnidirectional. If we had the directional EMP, again, you get that shotgun effect that um, we don't have here. So you don't have to worry about kind of landing short like you would otherwise. So what about other sources of EMP? Well, there are some very, very, very nasty sources of EMP, and that comes in the shape of what we call nuclear weapons. So there are two basic ways you want to think about this. The first one is if you have a little nuclear weapon, your EMP blast will be present. However, it'll be so short because the blast of the weapon will actually overtake the range of the EMP, which simply means that if you use a very, very small nuclear weapon, you don't need EMP to kill the target because the explosion is going to do it itself. That's different, however, from large nuclear weapons. Large nuclear weapons actually have the ability to EMP things at extremely long ranges from the actual center of the blast. To prove my point here, I'm going to go ahead and fire up my little Lewis script console. And I have a couple different explosions which we're going to simulate real quick. First of all, we're going to start with a 1.5 kiloton warhead. This is going to be pretty simple. We're going to detonate it right here at this little poor little house that says aim point. Let's see what happens. I love doing this. Boop. Okay, pause. So the first thing you notice is these guys who are very, very significantly far away from the target were hit by the EMP blast. EMP blasts move at the speed of light. The next thing you're gonna notice is even though they were nipped by the EMP blast, moments later, the explosion is going to just go and basically swallow them up. And you can see it evaporated everybody. Now, if I take a look at my legacy system with the radar on, notice the damage, nothing. Notice this one over here with his radar turned off, also in the EMP range, no damage in the slightest. Our two buddies up this way, who had a significant distance from the blast, also did not struggle at all with the actual explosion or with the EMP effect. 
So you can see that in this case, our regular OEMP actually did a better job. Now that's gonna be a little different, and let me go ahead and show you why in a moment. Let's do the exact same thing, but let's pull out a nuclear weapon, which I know is going to be able to do the job. So I'm gonna get myself, uh, let's, let's, let's use a nine megaton weapon. So this time I'm not even gonna detonate it anywhere close to these targets. I'm gonna detonate it significantly far away. Watch this. Notice everybody instantly got cooked by electromagnetic pulse. Now I'm gonna let this uh, gigantic mushroom, call. look at the size of this thing. This is one of the largest weapons that was ever detonated. Of course, this is a czar bomba if you really wanna see a big bang, but this one does a pretty darn good job. Now, if my math is correct, this should not collide. Nice, nice, ha <laughs> ha. I guarantee you everybody inside here just died of radiation. Okay, let's see the EMP effect with that. Whoops, switched to the wrong team there. I already was on the right team. Okay, I'll close my screen here. That's a fun effect, by the way, because you can create flack with it. So my legacy radar system on, you know, damaged, damaged, dam oh, not even hurt. Yeah, mildly damaged. Uh, we had our legacy ra radar off, not damaged, not damaged, not damaged, not damaged. Big difference. Let's go ahead and take a look at our modern radar. Destroyed, destroyed, destroyed. Dest oh, badly damaged. He was a little farther away, though. And of course, if we have our radar turned off, lightly damaged, not damaged, lightly damaged, lightly damaged. So you can see that the effect holds true whether or not you're using a directed EMP weapon, like such as one from a cruise missile, or you're using a traditional EMP blast. Now, one thing that you wanna know about EMP weapons is they are generally line of sight. So if you hide on the opposite side of a mountain, you're not going to be as affected as if you were on the other side as well. So kind of keep that in mind with things like airbursts. Uh, one of the fun uses for EMPs, of course, is uh, trying to hit aircraft and ships with them. But in order to do so, you have to be able to get close enough with the weapon itself to actually do the deed. Remember, EMP doesn't just destroy radars, it also destroys communication. So for those of you who like to play using the communication disruption option here, you can actually knock everybody in an entire formation's communications completely out so that they can't talk to each other using that particular strategy. Now that's sort of a fun method to kind of mix things up a little bit. All right, hopefully this video was helpful. Again, I'm just trying to answer some questions that people are asking about EMP weapons. They're definitely unique, and it's definitely a field that is uh, continuing to grow constantly. We're also starting to see some, um, I basically want to call them man-portable EMP weapons, which is kind of scary if you think about it, to use that at more of a tactical rather than a strategic level. For those of you who are trying to attack an S-300 site with an EMP weapon, one of the tricks is to try to detonate it on something nearby rather than trying to hit the site itself, especially if you're using something that's stealth because as always, whenever you use things that are stealth, they're gonna be picked up anyway once they get within a certain distance and they'll still be successfully engaged. Other than that, enjoy.